the man that's been with me for these last few months, making some frighteningly accurate predictions is, of course, Clive Moffat, who, amongst other things, advises our government on energy. What a mess they're in, Clive. Yes, indeed. It's very hard to see any clear rationale behind the EU decision, other than Germany has asked the Commission to say, look, we don't want to bear the full burden of having to cut back our industry and consumers on supplies. It would help if other members of the EU were to reduce demand and thereby reduce some of the pressure that we're having so to it's take. have a whip round for Germany? Hands up for Germany, yes. That's pretty much what it is. And, of course, just for those listening and watching that aren't aware of this, the, the Nord Stream 1 pipeline is going down to 20% of its 20 capacity. 20% of yeah, what it should be, yes, at this time of year. And the threat that Putin could play any sort of game over the winter months? I don't see... I think the game that's been played is that um, Putin will continue to manipulate the market in this way, so it seems. Uh, of course, you do... I mean, he can sell less at a higher price. He still gets the same revenue. Yes, and he has found new markets, hasn't he? Since the Indeed. Ukraine invasion, he's selling a lot more to India, a lot more to China. Yeah. Economically, he's not in the very damaged position that many yeah. thought our sanctions would put him in. So what happens now? The, they try this voluntary cut, which they're not, but they're not going to meet the target, are they? I think it's going to be very, very difficult. I think each country will always tend to do what's best itself and decide how much it wants to cut back output and employment um, and impact. What will this decision will not do? It won't alter. Taking 50, if it was a success, taking 15% out of European demand, say, between now and the end of next winter, could well, might, would not have any impact on price increases in the wholesale market. So it's not going to have any real effect on inflation in that sense. What it will do is that uh, if countries do decide, that particularly those countries that don't have large stocks of gas, those with large stocks of gas, like Hungary, for example, can say, well, we're not going to cut back. We're not going to put our industry... In effectively, the cutting back is lowering the standard of living in the country, isn't it? Yes, it's direct. It's like saying we're going to voluntarily impose stagflation across Europe. That's what it is. It's extraordinary. It's extraordinary. And, of course, the price of gas this week has rocketed once again on the exchanges. Indeed. Let's come back to the UK. Let's come back to our viewers and listeners worrying about their bills. We've had this wonderful concept from Theresa May of price caps that were introduced. They've not really worked. Where are we it's going? It's a bit of a misnomer, I think. <laughs> well, no, totally. But, you know, just um, cheer everybody up at home and tell them what's going to happen to their gas bills. Well, as of uh, the market seems to expect that we're going to be in the region of an energy cap of 3,850 by next January, which is almost double where we are now. Um, and so, yes, I think there's not much we can do about it. As I've said many times before on this program, if you don't control wholesale prices, there's very little luck trying to control retail prices. Final thought, if I may, Clive. Drax. This massive company, Drax, overnight announced their profits. They've made yet more money. For those that don't know, as I understand it, in this country run by a government obsessed with carbon dioxide and climate change, we cut down forests in North America and yes. in the Baltic states, and we ship it all in to North Yorkshire, where we burn wood. Correct. Which is now the biggest single emitter of carbon dioxide in this country... How is it allowed? Why is it allowed? It's allowed because trees grow again. And that's the <laughs> argument, that, it, that it's a sustainable form of CO2 production. Well, thank you, yes. <laughs> but there's a time lag here. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, and also you've got to bear in mind, that, well, this was allowed and it was subsidised at the top. Um, and it's likely to continue to be allowed, mainly because we are going to be very dependent in coming winter on fossil fuel generation, pellets included, and that might include coal. So drugs might end up burning more coal than, than it, as it used to do. Extraordinary. Clive Moffat, thank you very much.